Hallmark Movies and Mysteries presents an all-new holiday movie. Dear Santa, a young girl's letter. My mommy doesn't believe that she'll ever be in love. Is a Christmas wish for her mom to find true love. Love really is the last fairy tale we believe in. Tis the season for wishes to come true. I know that we just met, but it just feels like I know you. Julia! Love Always Santa premieres right now on Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. Dear Santa, My favorite book ever is The Christmas Bell. You're the main character. <laughs> but you know that. In the chapter at the toy store, you tell Annabelle that you can't wrap up the important gifts. I never understood what that meant until this year. I'm writing because I need the most important gift I've ever asked for. You will not be bland like last year. You will not be dry like last year. Just work with me here. Yeah, I'm talking to a turkey. Mommy, it's ready! No, not for another 36 hours, baby. No, my letter. You're cooking a turkey for 36 hours? I read about slow roasting on the internet. It keeps it juicy. It's a little early for a letter to Santa, isn't it? How many days till Thanksgiving? Point taken. All right, I will give it to Ben first thing in the morning. Want to help with the Ritz cracker stuffing? Daddy loves the Ritz cracker stuffing. Uh, yes, he did. Clear that? Great. Start with the crackers. Okay. Yeah, you scratch them and put them in this bowl. Sounds good. I want to see you this Christmas. Just see how the snow is falling down. Well, I want to see you this Christmas. Tell good old Santa Claus I'll be coming to town. How are you doing? Good. You have a great day. Come you here too. for a cup of All right, will do. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, Esther. Jake. <laughs> yeah. June. Oh, she took her hearing aids oh. out the ditzy bird. Oh, hey, June. Oh. Oh. Jake Granger. Hush. <laughs> Dear, we didn't expect to see you today. I heard they delivered a bunch last night. Didn't want to leave two pretty young ladies here all by themselves. <laughs> oh, compliments she hears just fine. <laughs> Little light, huh? It's Thanksgiving. You do have somewhere to go, right? June. I'm just looking out for our employee. You know how it's been since the D.I.V. The man knows how to spell divorce. Oh, and if you're lonesome, you can come have dinner with us. Anyway, I'm fine, ladies. I got big plans tonight. This is the saddest thing I've ever seen in my life. Look at you. I leave the door unlocked? I know where you keep your spare. Shouldn't you be with your family? I have three now, Jake. I have three kids. Are you listening to me? I will do literally anything to get out of the house, even work. 
Santa ink, huh? Look at this. Gimme, gimme, gimme. More, more, more. This one thinks Santa and the elves make PlayStations with their little hammers. Jake, this is no way for a best-selling author to be living. Understand that, right? I mean, you think Vonnegut ever pretended to be Santa Claus for $12 an hour? Sober, I mean. I like it. I get you right. What about real writing? What about writing that buys me a boat? Appearance requests, okay? That's a lot. Yeah, you're still very popular, which is amazing considering you haven't written anything in forever. Uh, it's only been... 18 months, buddy. Yeah. Listen, I love you. The publishing company loves you. Your fans, obviously, still love you. The only one who didn't love you was What's-Her-Face. Divorce can be a good thing. It can be a brush fire clearing out the deadwood. Do you even listen to half the stuff that you say? Uh, no, no. But luckily, neither does the wife. Which, speaking of, you are invited. Casa Green, tonight, Thanksgiving. Yeah. We'll be having Chinese. Happy Thanksgiving, buddy. Don't leave me alone with them. Please. Really Thanksgiving. Don't be a spoil sport. <laughs> Randy is right. I just made nine kinds of cranberry sauce. I am in no mood to think about Christmas. All right, listen up. My sister and I put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this meal. Gross. Not literally. I have only one favor to ask. Can we please eat like actual people this year and not devour this meal in 20 minutes? Go! One, two, uh, put that down. It's gonna be a beautiful Christmas. Hannah, 60 years of feminism, and we're the ones washing the dishes. You know what mom used to say married women don't hide in the kitchen because we have to, but because, because we, we want, want to. You did not see me. Oh, just, you know, the uh, turkey was amazing. Thanks, Randy. Well, if I, uh, if I knew that you would have been such a great cook back in high school, I definitely would have taken you to the prom. It would have been like eighth grade? Oh, you're being sweet. Yeah. Well, I probably would have caught my retainer in your lip, but I would have jumped at the chance. Well, then maybe we should do it. Prom? No, uh, you know, we should... Uh, You know, date. I mean, if you want. I'm just hey, saying. Ow. We need to go work on this thing or what? Okay. I'm just saying. If you made time, I'd make time. That's what I'm saying. Potato duty calls! <laughs> Randy? Oh, come on. Once you get past the mustache, Randy is. I know. Randy's great. He's. He's great. It's just, I don't really feel, uh... Don't you say spark. Spark. You said it. I know. I get it. I'm not a little girl anymore. Sparks and magic and dashing through the snow at midnight. Ah, oh, love really is the last fairy tale we believe in, isn't it? It's not your fault, sis. Bradley set the bar impossibly high. So what, I'm supposed to lower the bar? Exactly. Randy's got dental insurance and cares about you. You can convince him to shave the mustache later, or I will. You should go on the date.
This will be the third Christmas without my daddy. And my mommy now isn't the mommy I remember. At the beginning of the Christmas bow, Annabelle loses her leg. That's my mommy. She doesn't believe that she'll ever be in love like she was before. I don't want anything else this year. I just want my mommy to smile like she used to. You've never let me down before, Santa. Now my mom needs you. Bring back her light. Dear Lily, people wonder how I could live in the North Pole with all that snow and darkness. But what people don't realize is that I'm only ever one hot chocolate away from feeling warm and jolly and ready to get back to making toys. Love is a lot of things, Lily, but to me, the most wonderful thing about it is that it can be just as sudden and sweet as hot chocolate. A hint of it in the cold night air is all I need to start smiling. No one can replace your daddy. But maybe we can find some words to remind your mommy that the world isn't that dark or cold. I'm trying to imagine the Christmas decorations. I want to do something big with the cafe this year. Oh, can I help? Sure. What are we doing? Just imagining, Ben. Oh, well, the world certainly could use a lot more of that. <laughs> I have a uh, special delivery here for you, young lady, from the North Pole. Mom, can I be excused from my imagination? Sure. <laughs> I wish everybody got that excited about the mail. Yeah. Well, stop bringing bills and I'll throw a parade. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Yep. Lily. Is everything okay? I was just thinking. We don't go to the wishing well anymore. You mean on Christmas Eve? It was always the best part. You, me, and Daddy getting all bundled up and going out there. It felt like magic. Your dad always made it so special. I think I've been afraid that if I take you out by myself, it'll be a disappointment. Does this have something to do with the letter? I promise you won't be mad. What, did you ask Santa for a kangaroo or something? No. It's just... I know you don't like to talk about your dad. No. Oh, Lily, no. You know, you can talk to me about your dad whenever you want. Not mean you. I mean, with other grown-ups. Like Aunt Helen. Or Santa. 
Okay. Now I understand the difficulty paired with the loss of someone whom you love dearly. We all feel sadness, even me. But with loss comes wishes. A wish for everything to be okay, for everything to be again as it once was. With time, Lily, our wishes do come true. And in that miracle lies the magic of the human soul. There's a saying I heard delivering toys in Ireland that I feel you should know. Death leaves a heartache no one can heal. Love leaves a memory no one can steal. Love always, Santa. I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bestseller has no words. I could set off a firecracker. She wouldn't even flinch. You think I overdid the red? But you overdid everything. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Lily's mom? Did you write an eight-page handwritten letter to someone named Lily's mom? And it's addressed to love always, Santa. Ooh, 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 and you set off fireworks in every corner of her mind. <laughs> ooh, this reads better than my romance novels. <laughs> I think I may have underdid it on the red. <laughs> Boy, did she ever. <laughs> What are you waiting for? <laughs> Although the past few years have been the most defining of my life, moments of happiness grace it. And every single one of those moments are tethered to my little angel, Lily. I can't thank you enough for the time, the thoughtful time it must have taken to answer Lily's letter. It moved us both to tears. In a world where keyboards and touchscreens rule our lives, I cannot express how giddy I feel to actually handwrite this. Oh, giddy's not the right word. Classic. Words can sometimes hide from our hearts, but that is the perfect word for this moment. I feel classic. I feel a tremor in my hand as I write this. Maybe it's the wine. Maybe it's the wonder. I 
should be thanking you and your daughter. Her letter sparked something in me. And it's been a long time since I've written anything. I used to love to write and read. But the time keeps slipping away. So much to do. I feel like I'm measuring out my life in coffee spoons. Coffee spoons? You're an Elliot fan too? So many amazing words. Eyes that fix you in a formulated phrase. I fell in love with Elliot in college. Who doesn't love a literary man? You'd be surprised. It's hard writing. Most of the writers I know like having written a lot more than actually writing. So is that a clue, mystery man? Are you a writer? I am when I write to you. You've been writing two letters a day. I have to keep up. Just wait till I get to three. Whoa, they're all yours. Thanks. <laughs> I can get pretty annoying. P.S. Hey, Santa. It's Lily. I saw my mom reading a letter on that special super cool paper. My mom and Santa are pen pals. P.P.S. I know this time of the year is busy for you, so just let me know if she's bothering you. P.P.P.S. Sorry about that. Lily is kind of an unstoppable force of nature. I can see that. Maybe I should get her to work on figuring out your name. You can have mine just as soon as you tell me yours. going on nothing why do you think something's going on nobody is that happy to get mail well it's just this is just oh god having to say it out loud it doesn't make any sense i'm writing santa claus i'm writing santa claus i'm writing santa claus I'm writing santa claus <laughs> just uh, some guy from the Santa Inc. place. Lily wrote them because she thought I was still sad about. Anyway, what he wrote back was so beautiful and perfect, and I wrote him back, and then we got to writing each other. I mean, I don't know how to put it. It became something. That letter is like this fake sugar right here. It feels like it's sweet, but really, it's just a lot of nothing. That's... You know, that's a really good simile. I know, right? We're not 16 anymore, passing notes back and forth. Randy's not your ideal, so what? You're not his ideal either. And most importantly, he is actually here. It's not settling. It's... It's being realistic. Yes. Yes. I'm not sure what stopped the flood of letters. It's been a few days since I've heard from you. But it already feels...
are those appearance requests? All this fuss over a book? What is all this? Are you guys going on a date? That's right. It took 20 years, but your mom has finally agreed to go line dancing with me. This is too weird. I'm going home. Remember, Mom, at the bookstore tomorrow afternoon, Jake Granger! All right, little mama. You ready? Ready as I'll ever be. Let's do it. <laughs> now there's no such thing as too much. Dude, I told you the air pressure's too high. That's the whole point. Yeah, well, not if the potato evaporates. You're gonna run out of potatoes, Craig. Hey. The hammer is a precious instrument. Just so weird. Imagine if Greg paid attention to me the way he did that gun. I might not feel so. Anyway, how was last night? It was line dancing. You didn't like cauliflower at first either. It'll grow on you. Are you talking about line dancing or are you talking about Randy? I, I should have got the rental insurance. Uh, maybe they won't notice. Do you have a plan on how you're going to meet Mrs. Wright? The first thing Lily mentioned in her letter is that her all-time favorite book is a Christmas bow. Well, good. I hope she bought two. So I'm thinking if my book is her favorite, then there's no way she won't be at the reading. OK, it makes sense. But how are you going to know which one is her or specifically uh, mom? Kind of hoping I'll just know. That's a great plan. You know what I would do? Look for an old lady in a kitten sweater. <laughs> As always, your support is appreciated, Hank. I'm here, aren't I? <sighs> OK, I'm going to go. Have fun. We were just answering the very important question of how snow people all come to be. Just appear from the air? Question, said Mama. Let's see. Maybe it's time that I tell you the tale of how snow people all come to be. Here, <laughs> would you mind? Sure. Thank you. Mr. Granger, I want to be a writer like you. Can you tell me how to do that? And also, would you like a donut and some hot chocolate at my mom's store? <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> Looks like I got to go take a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. How many books have you written? Six. Is it hard to get published? Well, after the first one sold two million copies, no. What about that first one? Almost impossible. And how did you do it? I didn't stop trying. And how did you do that? I had someone who believed in me. Try again. Less mushy. Well, OK. Um, I knew I was good. So I made it my job to convince the publishers of the same thing. And that took four years. But eventually, this guy named Hank, he read my manuscript, and he signed me. Last question. Hmm. Do you need a partner? And if so, would you consider an eight-year-old? <laughs> Almost nine. <laughs> uh. Lily, I told you not to bother Mr. Granger. I was pitching him. Oh, well, that's so much different than bothering him. Hi, I'm Celia Banks. Uh, it's really no problem. The hot chocolate was well worth it. Oh, Granger. Jake Granger. That's my name. Jake Granger's my name. 
I think she's got it. <laughs> we have an open mic night on Sunday, and uh, Lily's gotten in her head. She wants to be a writer. Oh. Not a real writer. I want to write children's books. Open mic, huh? Are you, are you doing one this Sunday? Mr. Granger, you should come to a reading. No, Lily. Um, I'm sure that Mr. Granger doesn't have time to do that. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah, absolutely. I don't fly out until the next day. Christmas Eve. I've been told it's an easy travel day, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, please, um, tell us, how did you make your way here? Are you doing research for your new book on little towns? Because towns don't get much smaller. <laughs> yeah, I, uh... Yeah, I, I wasn't planning on doing this so soon, but I guess you gotta go with what you feel, right? Babe! Uh, I thought you were working on the potato gun. Uh, one, it's a cannon, and B, stupid Greg wouldn't listen to me about the air pressure. What's up? I'm Randy with the Y. Hey, Jake. Granger! The famous author. Oh, right. Cool. How did, uh, how'd it go for you? It went, you know, actually... It was really draining. Hey, reading wears me out, too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was going to go back to the hotel and just got to get some rest, you know? Uh, it was it was a pleasure. Are you sure that you can't stick Mom, around? We have... the man is tired. Come on. Yeah, so... Lena, sorry about that. <sighs> We can work out the details of the partnership later on Sunday. At the open mic. Oh, yeah, right. That you promised you'd be at. Yeah, I'll be there. This was stupid. I don't want to say I told you so, so... That's so stupid. I'm just going to say I don't want to say I told you so and let you fill in the blanks. I've read 70 pages of what's in this woman's soul, Hank, and it's not a guy with a potato cannon. Wait, what? It <sighs> doesn't matter. doesn't matter. Tell that to the rental car company. Okay, listen, buddy. You took your shot. You were a romantic out the wazoo. <laughs> you want to take away from this? Here's your takeaway. You're still very popular. Okay, people want to see you, so here's what we do. Book a tour. Mm -mm. No, listen, we go to every major city that has a luxury hotel in a time zone inconvenient for my wife to call. Okay, Jake, my dad used to say there's only one way to mend a broken heart. What's that? Money. Hank. Okay, he was divorced four times, but the logic is sound. I'll do the tour. Perfect. Okay, all right, I'll, I'll get on the phone. We'll get on the first flight out of here. But I'm staying through the weekend. I got to do the open mic like I said I would. I promised her. Lily. I saw you today. I was 13 again. All butterflies and insecurity. But your situation is different than I hoped it would be. I'm not 13 anymore. And it's not in my nature to pout. If this can't be a romance, it'll just have to be a connection. I would be grateful for a moment of either. You'll get this after I leave. I don't know how much time we'll have together, but you should know how much this connection has meant to me. And just in case I never get the guts to tell you, you should also know who I really am. Love always, Jake. Oh, babe, we were out at work through the night, but it was totally worth it. Oh, and? I finally talked Greg down from that overpressure jag thing he was on. Come here. See, people always think it's PSI. 
It's not. It's measured PSI over a surface area. You know, balance. Ooh. Balance. You're cute. I'll be a lot cuter when I win the veggie toss tomorrow. Randy, can we... Can we talk about you calling me babe? Yes. We went on a date. We're not dating yet. What? Why are you smiling? She said yet. Okay, stay on the A-Bay thing. I got it. Babelicious. <laughs> oh, it's 7 a.m. You're officially open. Can I do the, uh... Yeah. Yes! Thank you. Bye. Not... Too early, am I? Someone's not happy with you. Lily's Nook sort of understood that on the weekends this is hers. Oh, I had no idea. I know, and that's the only reason you're not dead right now. <laughs> She's an amazing kid. Scary, but amazing. <clears throat> Do you need to get back to something? No, um, but I can take your order. Oh, okay. Well, I'll have the two ham and ham not, and to drink the old man and the tea. Celia, I know I just met you, but I think you have a problem. Hemingway puns. I mean, it always starts off as some light wordplay on the weekends, you know, just for kicks. But the next thing you know, you're hooked. <laughs> and you're spending all night strung out <laughs> looking for a pun for Kilimanjaro. Oh, you have not seen the side of pickle. Dillinajaro. <laughs> That's worse than I thought. It's so good. <laughs> Come with me. Come on. Oh. I initially wanted a T.S. Eliot theme, but Bradley was always so good at debates, so Hemingway. Oh, wow. You guys did a ton of traveling. Mm. Well, we had all that grad school money rolling in. <laughs> Ooh, that's Cuba, right? La Bodeguita? Yeah, Del Medio, one of Hemingway's haunting grounds. Yeah, that must have been amazing to see in person. I haven't seen it yet. When Lily figured out that her surprising arrival on the scene interrupted all this travel, she made me make a list of all the places that her father and I never got to before he passed away. Mm. And this was her favorite. You need some new memories, Mommy. <laughs> so Lily's gonna take you to Cuba? I like the young in here with all the other pictures. Oh yeah, why is that? Uh, most people treat vacations like an escape. But you don't do that. I mean, this isn't about going someplace sunny. Your hope for the future grows right out of all the love that you had in the past. Are you analyzing me for English class? <laughs> no, no, this is real life. Besides, I've never read a story or a poem this beautiful. And everyone can live a life of letters. And sometimes letters are all you have. <laughs> you have no idea. Maybe that's a sign you should put my order in. Uh, the ham and tea? Yeah. Um, oh, actually, can you make that to go? Which I think that Hemingway might call a movable, movable feast. feast. I. Wow, I can't believe it. Five years that we just thought of that. <laughs> Christmas fair. Excuse me? My mom is going to be at the Christmas fair tonight. I mean, if you wanted to see her again. Oh, um, I, uh, I had plans to... Tell me where this Christmas fair might take place. 
You were flirting. You're wrong. First Santa Claus, now this guy. Anything else you want to tell me? You and Greg have something on the side? Because that's the only one I'm okay with. Look anxious. Like I know what it is. You're worried I'm not gonna share any of my maple syrup. And you're right, I will not. Yeah, none of this feels like me. Listen, you got married at what, 11? I'm 22. Same difference. Here's the thing, you're not in high school. You're not going steady. You're allowed to go to the Mayberry Fair and say hello to her and Gomer. Yeah, but if I'm being honest with myself, I don't want to just say hello to her. Uh, I want to tell her everything. I, I want to... Unwrap her presents. Well, no. Well, yeah. yes, I do. Right. But I won't. She's with somebody, and I gotta respect that. That's right, because you are the incredible Hulk of guilt, and that's fine. But here's the thing, as your friend, and more importantly, as the person who makes 7% on every book you sell, I think it's good that you found a woman that thrilled you. It's, it's, you know, it's nice. You can go in there and throw some platonic sparks. Come yourself again. Yeah. Hank, for once, you're right. For once? Jake! I'm over here! Lily! Hi! Right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you deal with this. Can I trust you? With what? I have this book that I wrote. And Mike Sullivan did the drawings for me. Okay. But I don't like him. Okay. Who said you did? I just don't want people to get the wrong idea. If I give it to you, then, well... I couldn't show it to somebody even if I wanted to. Oh. We're partners. There's laws against that stuff. Okay. Well, I don't have it with me right now. But I can drop it off at the front desk of your hotel. Okay. And even if my mom begs. Cross my heart. Speaking of your mom, is she around anywhere? What? I have the same problem with Mike Sullivan. <laughs> Ta-da! Oh, what the what? I'm here to relieve her. You're late. Oh, Mr. Granger's here. What? Oh, hi. Uh, I have to go watch Randy. I know. I'll be fine. Go have fun. Okay. Hello. I didn't know that you would be here. Disappointed? It's just that I have to be a cheerleader. Oh, an elf and a cheerleader. I know, right? Throw in my pleated plaid skirt from Catholic school and I'm a triple threat. <laughs> Well, will you, uh, walk me to the potato gun contest? I had a quarter for every time I heard that. <laughs> this way. All right. Here, let's get you talking to Sam. Hey, Lily. Mike so man. Hi. Do, do you want to... I'd like to thank uh, my, my best friend and partner, uh, Mr. Randy Eggwater. All right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Come on. Oh, yes. Wow. That, that was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. <laughs> well, Celia, this is Hank Green. Hi, nice to meet you. This all makes sense now. I 
brainstorm. I gotta work out. I thought that this year I would do more than just work the fair. Hey, uh, I think that I just lost my date, too. Well, I have an idea. I mean, you can't write a book about small-town America and not see the Christmas fair. You think? I know. This really is something special. It's my favorite thing. I think it's going to start to snow. When I first moved back here, I was sulking like a big baby. Uh, All my dreams involved late city nights, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but then my husband signed us up to do the Santa's workshop without telling me. And I just loved it. I, uh... This is why you don't talk about stuff. <laughs> Anyway, we do it every year. That's beautiful. I mean, everything except for this hat. The hat is all. I know, it turned <laughs> out so bad. I tried really hard. <laughs> Not hard enough, apparently. Hey, it's a fee, stay inside at all times and don't drop any items out of the car. Got it? Merry Christmas. Hands and feet stay inside at all times and don't drop any items out of the car. You're not cold, are you? Outdoor carnival ride in negative 45 degree temperatures? Why would I be cold? Good for you. I think desperate times. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, <laughs> Don't look down there. We're in trouble. <laughs> stupid people can't follow the stupid rules. Hands and feet stay inside at all times. So you're afraid of heights, aren't you? No. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so you're afraid of heights. You don't like the cold. Yeah, I know, I know. And I'm terrible at throwing a baseball. My dad is still disappointed. No, it's just... I mean, why did you come up here? Because you wanted to. So strange. I know that we just met, but it just feels like I know you. It's actually not so strange. You go home Monday? Yeah. That's a shame. There's a lot more to see. I mean, okay, there's not a lot more to see. <laughs> but I. I just would like it if you stayed. gotta learn to follow the rules. I should go. Uh, thank you for taking me on the Ferris wheel. Uh, uh, Celia. I gotta go pick up Lily. Right, I'll see you tomorrow. I'm keeping this. <sighs> Celia and I went on the Ferris wheel together. 
Are you speaking in code? No, it felt... Whatever it was, we both felt it. I don't think that Randy and Celia belong together. Nobody belongs together. Look, Hank, I'm being serious. All right? I need to know something. I'm not a bad person, am I? No, tomorrow, if I go for it and tell her who I am and that we already know each other, look, I just need to know that I'm not a bad person. You're not a bad person? Mm. Mm. That's it? Yeah, that's it. Technically, I'm the other woman. In all this hullabaloo, did it even occur to you to find out how many dates Randy and Celia have been on? Well, yeah, she said that they've known each other since... One? Having a conversation with my new client, Randall, we're doing a book tour, American Potato Guns, a journey. It'll be a blockbuster. And he makes mention that he and Celia have been on exactly... One date. You're not Mr. Wrong. You're Mr. Right. I mean, they are technically, you know, known each other for 25 years. Oh, come on, Hank. Be serious here. I am being serious. You be serious, okay? Stop acting like an eighth grade girl and be an adult about this. Use your eyes. Go there tomorrow. If it seems like it's the real deal, back off. Otherwise, I've heard tell rumors on the internet that there are some women that might like a guy who's rich and young and famous, okay? For the sake of Pete, when did this become so complicated? Cheese and crackers. I forgot that this was my room. You're a good friend, Hank. I'm a good friend. Put that in my eulogy. I won the veggie toss. Oh, and, and, some guy wants me to go on a potato cannon tour with him. Ah, <sighs> it was like a night of dreams. Randy, that's great, really. I'm really happy for you, but I'm not your girl. Uh, what? I think that this is moving too fast. We've known each other 20 years. It seems to me like it's not moving fast enough. Well, then I think we need to talk. Oh, come on, don't say that. Don't say that. Nothing good ever happens when a girl says, I think we really need to talk. Hot chocolate? Yes. Thanks, babe. Any chance this could get delivered before Christmas? Oh, no guarantees, my dear. <laughs> but you never know. It is that time of year for miracles. Hi, guys. I'm so excited to see you. Thank you for coming. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Thanks for coming. But I got to get up. Hi, everyone, and welcome to The Bun Also Rises Open Mic. So we have a lot to get through, so let's just get started. First up, give a big welcome to Mikey. Thank you, everybody.
well? Yeah, like a little ninja. Okay, let's start with the illustrations. Would you not negotiate about Mike Sullivan? Okay, well... Look, I feel a little bit rude talking during the open mic. How about I just write up the notes? Does that sound fair? You're gonna tell me it's bad, aren't you? Well, Lily, it doesn't matter what I say. Look, here's the thing about being a writer. Lots of people are gonna call you crazy. Right, they called me crazy. It's a stupid, dumb, ridiculous thing to want to be. Right? But you keep at it. And you never stop believing. Because one day, that stupid, dumb, ridiculous thing isn't stupid or dumb or ridiculous. It's just real. And it's yours. Alright. I'll get your notes. Do you have a reading? Yeah, I got a little something. As much as I wrote. Okay, next we have Jerry. Because sometimes cold is hot and and others hot is cold okay let's hear it for jerry everybody thank you it's it's too long to have a look Our little stage has had uh, many writers on it, but never one with this pedigree. So please give a warm welcome to the internationally best-selling author of The Christmas Bow, Mr. Jake Granger. So, I don't actually have a, a poem or a short story. In fact, I think maybe I, I should have come up with a less dramatic way of, of doing this. Th this is the first time that I've attempted one of these, actually. It's, um, it's a confession. What did you do? Hold that thought. Sorry, man. Sorry. This will only uh, this will only take one hot minute. Thank you. Thank you. Whew. Um. Hi. Um. Okay. So everybody here knows that I'm uh, you know, not a poet. But everybody here also knows how I feel about Cindy Lou Who over there, right? We both took a lot of left turns to, you know, get back in town here together. So I wanted to do something very spectacular for her. So, uh... Celia, will you uh, come up here, please? Roses are red. They are so red. Violets. Even more blue. Lily egg water? And I really, really, I want to go to Cuba with you. 
<laughs> That's right. Cuba, baby. Huh? I spent my advance book money on me. Hey, Lily. Uh, hey, I'll be in touch about the book, okay? I promise. Why are you leaving? I, uh... I gotta get ahead of the snow. <laughs> what snow? Oh... Um. See you later, partner. Jake. Hey, listen, you know, it's uh, maybe for the best, you know. Are you kidding me? It, it's not my Look fault. This. It's ice. I don't live in ice. I live in nice places that don't Thank have this. It's Forget ridiculous. It. Not mine. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, we're the only car on the road. This is the first place we've seen in miles. Be careful. This could be a murder house. It's just for the night. Lots of lights in here. Yeah. yeah. Well, the murderer would hide them. That would be a good good move on his part. Such a big baby. I'm not being a baby. I don't know why it's baby it's just showing baby. good it's showing good thinking to not be afraid. Okay, all right. All right, all right. Here we go. I'm gonna hug you in case it's a murder house. I'm just hugging you. Is that a murder house? Hey. No, no, listen, I get what you're saying. The flight's canceled. I know it's canceled. I'm not on the flight, so I know. Okay, here's what I need to know. When is the next flight? Oh, you don't know? Well, okay. I, do you have the Weather Channel? Because I'll tell you what I have. I have 300 years worth of farmer's almanacs. Maybe I get. you want to know what happens in 1908? Because I can make that work for you. <sighs> All right, listen, I'm going to level with you. It, it, I just had my third kid, and um, I, I want to get home, right? It, it, it's Christmas. I want to get home, and... I miss my family. So I'm sorry I yelled. I'll find my tickets. I'm sure they're in here somewhere. Hang on. I have them? Or no, I don't actually. She's still asleep? Well, she stayed up waiting for you. Sometimes it takes Randy a while for things to sink in. You're not mad at me, are you? Why would I be mad? Just because you had a sure thing and threw it away for some shifty no-good author who skipped town in the middle of the night? Guy gets tickets to Cuba. You say no? You missed the whole point of Cuba. Whatever. It doesn't matter. I know why you did it. You wanted your happy ending. Your big romantic moment. 
you know, that agent that Jake's made an offer to Randy and Greg. He wants to do a book on their stupid potato gun. Take them out on the road. Take pictures of them at various festivals. Oh, man. Of course. Another way to leave me here alone. What are you trying to say? You were always the smart one. The pretty one. I tried to tell myself I was just looking out for you, but it wasn't that. I wanted you to have my life so I wouldn't have to feel so alone. Honey. I'm not mad at you. I'm proud of you. You had the guts to try for your happily ever after. And it turned out spectacularly. How do you think I feel? I'm getting dumped for a potato gun. Oh, it's a cannon. <laughs> Hi, uh, Randy. Maybe I should go... No, 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 this will just take a second. I wanted to drop off your stuff. Randy, I didn't keep anything at your house. Well, then I guess it's just a box of stuff I didn't need. <sighs> Merry Christmas. Are you okay? Well, I got admit it was a pretty dark night. Then Greg came over. Greg? My Greg? You know it, Lamb Chop. Anyhow, you know, he started talking about relationships and stuff, and he was trying to explain to me why he couldn't go on the potato cannon tour with me, and I was like, you know, sad. Because double rejection. Then Greg said being with Helen was like getting a new truck. You know that feeling you get in the morning when you see it the day after you bought it? You're like, man, I bought a new truck. I mean, except he says he feels like that every morning. And that's when what you said to me, it made sense. I mean, we're not each other's new trucks. We're just, you know, two people looking for a ride. He called me a new truck? He called you an eight-cylinder Hemi. That's what he called you. Oh, that's, it's a good thing. Yeah. I gotta go. You're pretty amazing sometimes, Randy. Yeah, I know. You too, CeeLo. Friends? Always. it happened on a ferris wheel because everything is spinning i know it's silly and i know i just met him but we somehow we understand each other there was a connection electric and and magical but it was real he felt it too. It made it clear to me that I'm headed toward the wrong man. I've been letting pressure and inertia take me places I didn't want to go. You might not be Santa, but you're already responsible for one actual miracle. You convinced me love was real and possible again. Now I've met a man who it might be possible with, and I don't know what to do. Tell me you have one more miracle in you. You have to go to her. Did you read my letter? Well, I, 
you know, I was, I was looking for the plane tickets, and I, I, let's not get bogged down in details, all right? Let's just get to the point. You're the one that said this whole thing was stupid. Number one, that's before I knew it was real. Number two, did you read the same letter I did? <laughs> You're romantic. <sighs> all right, here's what we'll do. We'll wait till the snow gets down to pre-Ice Age levels. Uh, it's got to be today. It's Christmas Eve. I'm Santa, remember? You'll freeze to death. Huh. I'm gonna get dressed. You find me a ride. Great. Well, I have a song B and E already. I might as well throw in Grand Theft Tractor. Same fancy paper, same handwriting. Jake, Santa. Jake, right? Listen, Lily, about Santa. Oh, geez, Mom. Let's just talk turkey. I mean, Jake must have been the guy who answered my letter from Santa Inc which is obviously the human face of Santa's operation. I should have been able to figure this out. I mean, how many guys do I expect to quote early 20th century authors to me in a month? Mom, we need to go find him. Well, we don't even know where he is. The airport. We just look for the silliest red jacket. Well, it's snowing like crazy out there. Mike Sullivan has a snowmobile. I've heard. I'm not even sure that I want to see him. Jake lied to me. To you, too. Remember when we went to the mall and we saw Santa smoking behind the parking garage? And you told me that it was just one of Santa's helpers? Isn't there such a thing as good lies sometimes? Mom. No. This is my wish coming true. But I said no. We need to go. Well, he left us, Lily. So much that he made me believe in magic, too. When he died, I just didn't know who I was anymore. The real world stinks, Lily. It really, really stinks. And it just took me a really long time to find that magic again. And you wrote that letter. I think that you're right. I think that we should go find him again. Oh, honey. But not tonight. Tonight is about you and me. And the magic starts here. If someone had bothered to ask me what I wanted for Christmas this year, I would have said to feel like a kid again. Hey. What's in there? Go get her. Christmas Eve. 
Oh, you are gonna have to bundle up more, young lady, if we're going out there. Out where? Daddy's wishing well. How are we gonna get... Mike Sullivan has a snowmobile. I've heard. Hey. Hey. Michael, thank you so much for coming on such short notice. We will be back as fast as we can. It's Christmas Eve. We can't just leave him here on Christmas Eve. You have a kitchen? Fully stocked. Take your time, then. <laughs> you rode all the way out here in a blizzard, and you're just going to turn around and go home again? What are you, dumb? Your mom said you needed something. Anyway, thank you for the snowmobile. We owe you one. We're going to the wishing well. And Lily. You want us to make a wish for you? Nah. I already got mine. That kid is smooth. Everything seems smaller since last time we were here. Funny, I was thinking how much bigger everything looked. It's not the same, Mom. I miss Daddy. I don't know what I mean. I miss him too. You know, it's not going to be the same. But it's going to be okay. And it's going to be okay because we have each other. And that's our magic. Okay? Okay. Why don't we get you your wish and get you home? It's just the letter, finding our way back here. We did that, me and you. It feels like the moral is, if you want something done, you gotta get out there and do it yourself. And maybe we don't need magic anymore. It's the most adult thing you've ever said, and I hate it. We did not go through all of this for you to come out the other side sounding like an accountant. Oh, Lily. You learned a really good lesson, but here's another one that I want you to listen to and I want you to remember. Never stop being a little girl. And never stop believing in Santa. And never, ever stop believing in silly wishes. Because it is Christmas time, and it is the time for silly wishes. Mom, what are you doing? Fate. Be kind. Mom. Oh. 
a horse. Julia! Hey! Up, up. Julia! Lily! I'm Santa. I'm out of breath. We figured it out, Jake. Your love always, Santa. Yeah. Are you mad? Oh, yeah. I have so much to say to you. You stole a one-horse open sleigh. Borrowed. I still feel like we're gonna be on the naughty list. Jake, quick question. How the heck did you find us? Well, I just pointed the sleigh and hoped that Christmas magic would take care of the rest. And I guess it did. Magic. Magic. <laughs> Christmas magic? You went to our house for nursery, and Mike Sullivan told you where to go. It's okay. Mike Sullivan is pretty magical. <laughs> but no more secrets, okay? We're partners. Okay. Dashing through the snow on three, two, one. Yeah! Dashing through the snow. I stole a horse. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs>